Good afternoon. Hope everyone's doing well. This is Sarah Kite with UT Extension in McMinn County. And I'm joined today again by Dr. Katie Conrad. Appreciate your time. We had a great talk last week for our coping corner. And hope you're feeling relaxed, managing your stress well. You put some things into practice that we shared with you last week. I know in our family, we've been talking about the colors and the mood meter. And my son that was coming over to me, he's five. He really got mad about not getting something at the store. And he let me know that he was red. <laughs> and I said, what does red mean? Like, you're my sweetheart, Valentine? He goes, no, I'm mad. <laughs> and so even with questioning, you know, what he thought red was, he got it that, you know, he's able to say he's red. And we talked about it. Um, but today we're talking about the new normal, um, the unnormal, the abnormal that today is just brought to us. Um, back in March when we started all the COVID closings, you know, our life today isn't like it was in March. Um, you can call today unnormal, abnormal, not normal, um, the new normal, whatever you want to, but it's just not the same. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to deal sometimes with what's going on. Um, you know, we still aren't back in our workplaces. In extension, we have people that come to our classes and we teach them. And we don't have classes going on that are in person. We don't have big group activities like Tai Chi classes going on. Um, our schools, our parent classes, our after school programs, it's just different. And just trying to learn and adapt is difficult. Um, so we're going to talk today about how to cope with all that new stuff and changes and also the uncertainty because a lot of things have changed since back in March of 2020 as our year kicks off. So um, just hopefully you get some new tips some really fun activities you can do um, as a family. They're helpful for all ages. So let's let me let me ask this question. So how are you doing with this new unnormal? How do you handle this life, Katie, Dr. Conrad, as it comes? Yeah, so um, I, you know, I am lucky because working from home, we have that ability with going remote. And however, there's a lot of jobs that don't have that opportunity. But regardless of what job you're working in, we all are having to change our routines and adjust and adapt and as I said last week, and as you know, I have a seven month old. So I'm also adjusting to being a new mom. I'm learning, um, they, they change constantly. And so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what we had change in routines and our, our normal rituals that we got kind of used to with going to work and, and organizing our life and, um, you know, then COVID happened and it's like work from home, daycare is closed and he's growing and he's learning new milestones and he's, there's certain things that I can't do with him anymore because he's just constantly changing. So um, I feel a little bit of pressure with getting things done and feeling um, almost a sense of guilt sometimes because I can't be as productive as I'd like to be. But then I have, you know, I think of the silver lining. I get to be home and see his milestones as he's developing and, and things that I would be missing out on if we were um, back at work and he was back at daycare. So luckily he's back at daycare now, but it's, you know, a reduced schedule. So we're still kind of adjusting to that. So I feel like this has just been a very chaotic period and lots of adjustment and changing my routine which is very unsettling, um, especially to my husband who can be a little bit more type A and um, very likes to have a particular routine. And um, so we, we're working, you know, we've become a good team and trying to figure it out. But I, I know that a lot of my friends and family members are adjusting to the same kind of thing. What about you? Yeah, I really agree with the routine part. You know, we had this great routine when we were waking up, going to school, going to work, coming home, picking up, you know, the more changes and disruptions in a routine, the more stress that happens. So to cope with that, you know, what you said is so perfect because now that I am home and I'm thankful I can be home, we have to still wake up early so we can get to, I call it mommy school. 
get to the table and do mommy school. And with that, we have a schedule of first we're doing our handwriting, then we're doing this, then we're doing that. So the kids know what to expect. Once they know what to expect, they feel in more control. I feel in more control. And then some days we just have like fun days, a theme day. Um, my kids like cowboys. So everyone dressed up in their best cowboy, girl, fancy get up. Um, we had hot dogs and baked beans like the cowboys would, you know, just adding some flair. And sometimes we get so um, stuck in a, in a spot of this is out of control. I don't understand what's going on that we forget to have fun. Um, so we change up our routines and have theme days. I know 4-H camps are canceled across the state. Um, that's a big thing for a lot of our kids. So, you know, in a, in a home, can you have some sort of camp week? You know, we put a tent up in our den and put construction paper up around the little fire pace, fireplace grill and we had a little camp out and we left the tent up inside, you know, for a couple of days until that kind of stressed me out. But, you know, having fun and making new routines and, you know, maybe a vacation was planned and let's talk about, you know, how do y'all feel that we're not having a vacation? Now they might not care. They might want to stay home anyways and do whatever they do, but some might really care. So having these new routines and changing routines and being adaptable to, okay, well, it's raining out. So we can't go and do what we plan. So let's be adaptable. And that's really good life skills to teach people, excuse me, to teach people. But, um, you know, that kind of goes into the name it and tame it we talked about last week. You know, how can we develop this new routine? How do you feel about it? What works for me? might not work for you because your child's seven months old. So really just talking about it and having those new routines and daycares are going back. Some of them are, and that schedule's not as it was. So just, you know, develop that new routine for the day, for the week, for the month, whatever that looks like. So what about loss? You know, I think about, um, you know, there has been several deaths in our County across the state, you know, um, besides that physical loss, we have other emotional losses, you know, that school who didn't have their graduation, didn't have their prom, um, sporting events, they just canceled the season, canceled the summer season. Um, just the loss in general of everything that's going on, you know, how do you cope with that roller coaster of emotions when there's that sense of loss? Yeah, so I wrote a fact sheet about this because it, it got me thinking about um, a theory that I learned back in graduate school um, and it comes from grief research, and it's specifically called ambiguous loss. And um, it's from Dr. Pauline Boss out of the University of Minnesota, but she spent pretty much her uh, life's work working on creating this, this idea of ambiguous loss. And, and I am right there with you and with everyone who have lost the ability to do things. You know, I live in Tennessee. I live you know, six to seven hours away from any family members. So we have a seven month old and we don't get the opportunity to share him with anyone. And there's also no end in sight, you know, really about when we're gonna be able to safely be able to go visit or have them visit. And that's a little bit, you know, we have to protect, my son's name is Trip. we have to protect him um, because he's, he can't wear a mask, he's under two. And, um, and then we also want to protect our family members who um, have conditions that are risky. And so it's upsetting knowing that we don't know when we're going to see family again. Um, and, and even friends around here, you know, we've tried to do socially distanced um, porch hangouts and that's worked to, do, to an extent, but you want the physical touch. You want to hug someone. You want things to go back to normal. Um, I have coworkers and other friends who live alone and they don't have anyone. And especially during quarantine, that was really hard and challenging for them because they were like, I haven't been hugged in weeks. And I, you know, at least I have my husband and my child at home that I can, you know, snuggle with when I want to. But for people who live alone, it's, it's really upsetting. So everybody is experiencing loss in some way. And even though it doesn't look exactly like grief, like somebody passed away and you're having to deal with and go through the stages of grief and kind of process through that. It is somewhat similar based on this theory of ambiguous loss because there's this lack of uncertain, this, this uncertainty and this lack of closure as to when we can kind of resume our former lives. So I'm going to share um, this 
my screen here and show you this fact sheet that I wrote. Um, and it's called Coping During COVID-19, How Uncertainty is Affecting Our Mental Health. And towards the kind of go through and talk about what loss means and what research says about loss, but specifically moving down to the idea of ambiguous loss. And this is what I wanted to highlight because I talked about it in the, the sense of COVID-19 and applied it to that, that idea. So typically when you think of ambiguous loss, it's applied to people who, um, in two scenarios, either physical presence with emotional absence. So this would be the case of a parent or a grandparent who has dementia. And while their physical being, their physical body is still there, their emotional presence is gone um, because of the state of the, the condition. Um, and then our other part of ambiguous loss is physical absence with emotional presence. And physical absence with emotional presence is, for example, a missing person. Their, phys their physical body is not there. You're not sure where they are in the world or even if they're with, still with us, if, but you still have that emotional attachment. And so when I think about this in the sense of COVID-19, um, we're really kind of experiencing this ambiguous loss because of the great uncertainty and not sure when we're going to be able to be physically present with people or when we're going to be able to resume um, any sort of family get-togethers or vacations or travel across the, the world um, to do the things that we normally want to do and enjoy doing and you know, save up our money and our time to be able to do. And so I think this is a, you know, it's hopefully this will be useful for those who are trying to wrap their head around what does uncertainty mean and why am I feeling this sense of loss and why is it so troubling and upsetting for me? But also to talk about some of the, the stress management strategies towards the end, which we'll get to in a little bit. But I actually see on our uh, call, I think we have a Zoom bomber. Do you wanna talk about who might be Zoom bombing us, Sarah? Yeah, I think um, our McMinn County Mayor has joined us, John Drentry. Can you hear us? Can you see us? Hey, how's it going? It's going well. I don't do video. I have a face for radio, not not video. Oh, I see. <laughs> hey, we're glad you want you want to drop by today and give our our county residents, our state, just a few words of encouragement as we talk about coping. The floor is all yours. <laughs> um, it seems like we have to do a lot of encouragement right now, but I just tell people to look kind of, you, sometimes you have to just look to the past and see what we've, we've already been through and how we've you know, been able to prosper even to spot hardships. And it, it's kind of true. The old saying, what, you know, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. So, and I don't think we see any of the challenges we're seeing today as anything that's going to, going to destroy us, you know, so it's just going to make us better. So, uh, you know, I just down the hall doing some working with one of our office holders on some new changes. That's uh kind of use this opportunity to, to fix other issues in the office. So I hope that's the, the takeaway everyone's doing saying, you know, when we, before we kind of just go back to hundred percent normal, whatever that is that we say, you know, what, what did we find out worked well during this? I know so many families said, you know, we got time to spend, we spent time together. We, we really missed it. And, you know, we, I've seen children outside playing that they said, before, they just hadn't been doing that. And, you know, so there's been some good that been taken out of this. So, uh, just just hang on to the good and make the make the good stuff uh, keep going. And I think a lot of people were reminded what's really important in life during all this, and uh, uh, that's what we have to remember. So we kind of get bogged down with all the uh, the normal day to day stuff, the busyness and the noise. And I think hopefully during this time, sometimes I thought maybe the good Lord just sent us a timeout period. Mm -hmm. You know, just 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 sit back. Spend some time at home and realize, look around, see what's important, see the relationships are important, and what have you missed? You know, if you missed it, you, 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 uh, it is important to you, and so cherish it when you get to re-engage with it. So, I don't know if that's really great encouragement, but that's just kind of how I feel about the, what the whole COVID-19 thing has done, is uh, it's just kind of let us take a pause as a community. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I appreciate your time and I appreciate all your hard work that you do for our county. Um, 
Well, I'm glad that you're doing well too. To, it's a privilege to get to do it. I'll tell people the county has been much better to me than I've been to it. And so it's, uh, I've been very blessed. Well, thanks for those encouraging words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really agree with, you know, what he was saying. Um, it goes along with what you were just talking about too. As we go through all this stuff and, you know, cope with the daily stuff, you know, to think about the positive also. And, you know, you have to think about both the negative and the positive to get through it. Um, but think about what good has happened. And like he said, you know, we have had more time to reevaluate and assess. And um, there's a really cool activity that we've talked about. And I want you to share with all those that are listening, but the um, COVID-19 time capsule. You know, I think about my um, older relatives and they always talk about the Great Depression and save your stuff and recycle your stuff. And they have great stories to share. And some have saved newspaper articles and things like that, that as a younger generation, I appreciate. I like to look at those things. Um, our generation, we lived through 9-11, and some of those things, um, my grandparents encouraged me to save the covers of magazines and news clippings, and then when my kids get to be young adults, to share those things, that piece of history with them. Um, it's kind of like what John Gentry was saying, you know, there are history things that, you know, historical things we can look at and learn from, and, you know, I really like your concept that you, um, we're talking about with the COVID time capsule. So just share that concept. It might be a really fun activity that families can do as they cope with all this COVID stuff. It, you know, it's, it's here. So this is a um, 2020 time capsule. And there's, um, let's see, which this is the kids version. I also have an adults version. So you can do this together as a family and kind of just document your lives. And I'm, I'm with you where I've saved you know, I saved the newspaper from 9-11. I still have that. I've saved, um, you know, anything from my life that has been important that I want to share with my kids in the future. Um, my husband and I have a, a scrapbook of pretty much our lives before we got married. And I put together a big scrapbook that we shared at our wedding. And it in incorporated, you know, photos and, um, you know, wristbands from concerts and uh, plane tickets, and just to just to capture what we what the evolution of our relationship. I even have print screens of funny text messages that we had with one one another. So um, I think this one positive spin on this is to really kind of just document both the good and the bad. And so this is a, a great activity where you can um, put some photos together, um, journal of your day, special memories. As you scroll down, you can kind of go through and talk about for kids, you know, what are your favorites? Um, and then also document your feelings. And it's okay if those feelings are not always positive and we need to be able to talk about the good and the bad. And so while we have some silver linings with the pandemic, not everybody's feeling that all the time and that's okay. Um, so you can kind of just describe your feelings and then you can talk about where you're living and so on. And the same thing with this adult, the adult edition is, is very similar, obviously, um, for the appropriate audience. Another, um, you know, one thing that the, your mayor said that, I, that struck me that I really liked was when he talked about this, it's almost like it was a forced timeout for us, you know, saying that we, we need to just slow down. And, it's given us all the opportunity to slow down and um, given employers recognition that their employees are working hard, but they're also not just employees, their parents, their family members, they have challenges with work-life balance and they're understanding that, hey, we need to focus not just on you know, their work productivity, but kind of see them as a whole person. That kind of struck me when he talked about that, that maybe this is the opportunity to take a time out, but also for everyone to notice that, hey, there's a, you know, a softer side to humans and that human side of humans that we really need to make sure that we're meeting their needs. And I think too, um, with taking a time out from all this life, but to reevaluate, where are you spending your time? I see a lot of people on social media reading all day long, getting mad about stuff all day long. Um, you're missing time. You're missing the moment that you're in 
So evaluating your time and seeing how you're allocating that to give you the best coping ability. It's hard to cope when you're stuck in the nitty gritty of the hatefulness of social media and all the negativity of social media. Well, that really just adds to not effectively coping. So one activity that you have, Katie, that we've used in the past is the little palm jars. So we're nearing the end of our videos. So this will be our last activity that I want you to share. Um, Katie and I can talk all day long on this. That's why we're making a series that's going into July, but this will be our last activity before we close. So please share that one with us. It's so good. Yeah, so this is very similar to the mood meter that we discussed last week. And um, the mood meter um, helps children learn different types of emotions. So building that emotions vocabulary and also recognizing and coming up with strategies to change the emotions if they're uncomfortable and to kind of move to a different um, emotion. And so kind of going on along with your theme of name it to tame it. Um, this is an activity to do both. And this is the emotions wheel. And um, your younger kids, they're gonna understand the, the, the emotions here in the center, but your older kids, um, you can start to work with them on learning some synonyms or similar um, feelings that are associated with that. So they, you know, it can expand their vocabulary. And um, this activity is actually really easy. It's very similar to the mood meter where the, the colors of the emotions um, are listed here. If you take a, a jar, and um, if you can see me here, you take a jar, I've got a mason jar, you could take a, um, a peanut butter jar, clean it out, take off the label, um, something really quick and easy. Have your kids decorate it, you guys can decorate it together. Maybe everybody has their own jar, but make sure that it remains clear so you can kind of see inside of it. Um, and then you get these little palms. You, let's see here. You can get them at any craft store, Target, Walmart, um, Amazon. You can find them anywhere. And kind of attach different emotions to the colors. And I've got an example here, but if you, you know, think that some certain colors should be associated with a different emotion, you can kind of make it up together as a family. Um, so what you can do is do daily, not more than just daily check-ins, you know, you can check in throughout the day with your kiddos um, and just say, hey, how are you feeling today? Or if they maybe ha are having a tough time, just say, hey, we need to check in. Um, and then you can guide them over to the palm meter and say, you know, how are you feeling? They, they choose a color and, oh, how did you choose that color? What, what emotion are you feeling? And you can kind of prompt them or probe them to, to expand on the different emotions because again, as you're building that vocabulary, they may kind of rely on the emotion words that they know, but kind of just have a dialogue and, and do it yourself too. So you can model to your kids, you know, I really am feeling irritated right now because I, I really want to um, do the task that I asked you to do, but, and I really wish that you would listen to me. So I'm feeling very frustrated right now, irritated. And you can do, do a, a mix of positive and wow, you really did such a good job with um, finishing up your homework and I am so impressed and so proud of you. And then you can check in and, and put a, um, a helpful palm in. And this is just something at the end of the day, you can come together and you can say, hey, let's reflect on our emotions throughout the day. Um, you could even do it at the end of the week, maybe you have a pizza night on Friday and you take out your palm jar and you look at throughout the, the week and you, you notice, what are some things that we're noticing? What colors, what, what's the majority, what color do we see the most? Um, which color is the least? And kind of reflect on that. If you notice that there's more red that week, what was going on and what strategies could we have done together to move us to a more pleasant or comfortable emotion? So that's um, the palm meter is kind of what we're calling this, but it's a, just a, something that a daily check-in, um, you know, a couple times a day or a weekly check-in to reflect on how you're feeling and, and come up with strategies so you can tame those feelings. Thanks, I, I really enjoy that. Um, and I think it's so important to help kids know that it's natural and normal to have a jar full of colors. 
And that's totally okay. And that's just who we are. You know, I can wake up relaxed and within one second step on a toy and be like, oh, so mad. Why don't you all clean your toys up? And then we talk about it and I'm relaxed, you know. So we do naturally just go through those emotions. Um, I think that's really great. Do you have any last comments or anything you want to share before we close for today? Um, I don't. Act, I mean, aside from wishing everyone to do well and to feel well and um, hang in there, <laughs> I know it's a very uncertain time and it's it's a struggle for a lot of us. So um, I'm feeling the pressure. We all are there with you, but um, be well. Yeah, we love you all, and I hope you enjoyed today's coping series. Um, you've got a lot of great activities that you can try that will help you to effectively and be healthy through your coping. And then we'll see you all next Wednesday for another coping on Wednesday. So breathe, relax, be effective with your coping. If you need anything, you can call our office. You can email, and we'll be glad to help you further. But we look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a great Wednesday. Bye-bye.